Okay. Hello everyone. Okay. Um, uh, uh, my name is Sam Yot Ke Bunit Vilay, uh, the local organizing committee from uh, Thailand. And today I'm very glad to uh, be here to serve as the organizing of the sessions of P Robocup uh, Industrial at Works. So today I'm uh, very uh, glad to uh, have the Sari set here, who uh, is the organizing committee of the leagues, and then the, uh, she will uh, present about the overview of the work at Berkeley and also some of the rule and regulation and also the technical in some part. So uh, before I start uh, the sessions uh, here, uh, uh, I would like to introduce uh, the Sally first. So uh, she finished in uh, medical technical engineering and also the Master of Applied Science and Research. And she employed it at uh, Numbers Institute of Technology and also be the autonomous team from the number as well since 2019. And the main focus of her is on the, of the object detections and data generation for the training of neural networks, especially object detection and segmentations. Okay, um, today I think that it is really a good time for us to hear the very good uh, be good information from her. So, uh, Sally, please uh, present your... Uh, your uh, All right. Hey, everyone. Um, I think you can see my slides. Um, like it's already been said, I will give you a quick overview of the At Work League, um, how everything uh, is organized, the rules, how the whole arena is set up, etc. Um, so just for a quick overview, at first I will talk about the organization during the competition at the beginning, during and at the end of each run, um, how the arena is set up, what objects we will have, um, normal tables, specific tables, and then I will go more into depth um, for the competition, so navigation, manipulation, transportation, etc. So first, uh, before the competition, every team has to choose a referee who will be a referee for the whole RoboCup. Uh, the referees are there to oversee each run, to note the points and penalties, and if there's any disagreement, they will discuss it and find a solution. At the end, they will declare the final score for each team and each run. So if you have a referee from your team, you are able to represent your team and sort of maybe get a little more points. Um, and the absence of a, will, of a referee will be penalized. Of course, if you're injured or something, I'm sure we will be able to figure something out. But usually every referee from each team um, should be able to be there and to oversee the runs. Uh, during each run, when the run starts, the members are not allowed in the area anymore. Uh, the interaction with the robot is not allowed unless it is explicitly allowed by the referees. For example, if you have lost an object and your robot would be damaged if you wouldn't remove the object, you will be allowed to do so, but you will have to ask the referees first. Your robot is only allowed to carry a maximum of three objects at, at every time. Um, and for, uh, for each test, you only have one restart. So let's say you start your robot and something goes completely wrong and you're not sure what this is and usually it works fine, you're able to call a restart. Um, freeze, then all scores are reset to zero and all the scores you will have um, when, once the run is restarted will be multiplied by 0 0.75. Uh, your test time will not be reset. So let's say you have five minutes and um, after two minutes, you call a recall, uh, a restart. You will only have three minutes left. Um, yeah. Then the run ends. Once the run time has passed or the robot has completed all tasks or if the referees decide to stop your robot. So if you drive in circles for two minutes straight, the referees will say, hey, there's not any progress going on. We will, start, we will stop it here. Um, it makes no sense to continue. Or if your team leader wants to run um, for similar reasons, maybe. Now, uh, to the arena setup. You can see here a example arena setup, which we have here at our laboratory, laboratory in Nuremberg. 
And you can see, I don't know if you see my mouse, um, but we have tables in different heights, some zero heights here, which are marked um, by tape and uh, just either uh, white paper on the floor or some white plates. Um, we have five centimeter workstations, 10 centimeter workstations and 15 centimeter workstations. So uh, five different heights together. We have these shelves. Two in total, we have a rotating turntable, which is a circular table uh, that rotates at a fixed speed. Um, the speed is set or is, is decided by the organization committee or by, by the referees. Um, so you don't really know the speed when you go into the competition, but it is set uh, before you start your run and it is then set for all, all of the teams. We have also have a precise placement table. I will say a little bit more about that later on. And something you can especially see here in the 2D map is that uh, the robot is able to pass through everything. So the minimum distance, for example, here between the wall and this wall is 80 centimeters. So you are sure that the robot can pass through there uh, without having a risk to, the, to get stuck. Um, something else you can... Um, the, this red and white tape marks walls. So it is pretty much identical with these white walls here. If you cross this tape, if you have any collision with it, it is as if you would crash into a wall and it will very heavily be penalized. Um, this um, yellow and black barrier tape is not as heavily penalized, but you should still not cross it. There will be penalties. They will not be as heavy as with the red and white barrier tape. That is because um, black and yellow barrier tape usually marks dangerous zones. So usually you would refrain from going there. For example, if you know these uh, police shows, usually the black and, uh, black and yellow barrier tape is for something that you should not cross. And the same applies to the robot. It is not dangerous to cross it, but you shouldn't do it. Um, another tape, which you can't really see here, uh, is the white and blue tape. It usually marks the start uh, or the entrance and the exit. Um, you will not be penalized for crossing once. So for example, if you enter the arena, but then if you cross it again and again, so exiting and entering the arena again and again, that will be penalized. Um, another thing you can see here are some more objects. So we also have these containers where you will later need to place objects into. Now, I think I've already said everything in here. This is just sort of a summary of everything I have said, um, just in case I send the slides out and then you can just read through it and don't have to, re to remember everything I've said. Um, another thing that might be interesting is the placement of obstacles. So at the beginning, of course, it is fairly easy. We won't have any obstacles, but later on, uh, for example, with the yellow and black barrier tape they have already told you about, or with physical objects such as wall segments or boxes, we will try to block your path uh, in, in different ways. Um, just to see if your navigation is up to the task. So we will either block it completely, so the remaining space is less than 20 centimeters and you are not able to move past it, then your robot will have to find a new way. It can be semi-blocked, then the distance will be below the 80 centimeter threshold, but if your robot is narrower, it might still be able to pass through it. Of course, you are not allowed to collide with anything, but if you manage to do it without colliding, you will not be penalized. The non-blocking obstacles just either enlarge existing obstacles uh, or just are uh, placed sort of uh, in the middle of the arena so you can still move past it. There's no path blocking there, uh, but still your robot has to has to detect it and is not allowed to crash into it. Um, apart from that, the, we have a lot of different objects in the competition. You can see all of them here. They are just sort of industry objects, uh, aluminum profiles, screws, nuts, and you have to detect all of them or be able to detect all of them and grasp them and of course um, handle them. So for example, this screw is rather large and, and rather heavy and your grip and your arm should be able to grasp it and to lift it. On the right, you can see the containers that I've already talked about. What will happen in the competition is that, for example, two containers are placed next to each other and your robot knows it needs to place something into the red container, then it needs to detect, okay, this container is the red one and then place the object into that. 
Um, another thing that I want to talk about a little more are the tables itself. What you can see here with the green area is the manipulation area. What's interesting here is that the objects cannot be placed on on any position on the table. They are restricted to this this uh, green area, and they always have to have a two centimeter um, difference to each other. So you will never encounter any overlying objects um, that you have to sort of sort of separate. Um, they will always be placed so you can easily or you you can completely see the object. Um, and they also are not allowed to be too close to a wall, um, just to just to avoid uh, crashes from the robot arm with the wall. Um, another thing about the tables is we will later in the competition, when it gets a little trickier, use arbitrary surfaces. These are chosen by the referees, and you don't really know what it will be. So it can either be um, some aluminum surface like here, or some wooden surface, something that looks very much like brass, um, just something to throw you off. You don't really know what it is at the beginning, um, but it will be, will be known once the competition starts. Now we have a few special tables. I've already talked about it a little bit. One is the shelf. Um, the lower shelf has a minimum height of 10 centimeters. The upper shelf has a maximum height of 40 centimeters. And as you can imagine, if you try to pick or place something, especially from the lower shelf, shelf or to the lower shelf, you need to be very careful not to damage your robot arm or your gripper. And that's really the main focus here, that you have some grasping and placing routines that are compatible with the shelf. For the precise placement table, you can see here very object specific cavities, and these are really very well fitted to the uh, object form, and you will just need to be able to precise, very precisely place the objects into there so they fall through the cavities um, to be able to score some points. Then last but not least, sort of the core discipline or the king discipline is the rotating turntable. Here, the objects are placed on the circular table and it will rotate with a fixed speed. Um, and you will need to grasp these moving objects. Of course, you're not allowed to um, prevent the rotation of the table or anything. So you need to detect the objects when they are moving and also grasping them when they, they are moving. So that's sort of the whole thing for the arena in general. Now we will go more into depth for the specific tests. The sort of easiest test, which will probably also not be in the competition because it is so easy, is the basic navigation test. And here the robot receives different locations, uh, orientations and durations. And it will need to move through these target locations in the given order. So it re receives location ABC. It needs to move there. Uh, in the current, correct orientation and stay there for the given duration to be able to score points. Again, as of Rubo 2021, this test will not be performed, um, but I don't know what happens in 2022. Maybe we'll still have it. If there are many new teams, we might still include it, uh, which is why I've included it here. For the basic manipulation test, of course, the robot should manipulate objects. So you can imagine that you have two tables one is the source location and one is the target location, and you receive a list of objects. You now need to detect the given objects, grasp it from the source location and transport it to the target location, and then move to a final place to really finish the task and get the maximum amount of points. For this, you have five minutes time um, and no arbitrary surfaces or de de <coughs> decoy objects or obstacles are used. Um, for the basic manipulation test, it might be worth to clarify a few things. Um, first, an object only counts as grasped if it was grasped from the correct so, uh, service area, so from the correct table, and then placed on the robot platform. So if you lose it during grasping, it will not be counted as grasped. You will not receive any points. The robot is allowed to grasp and examine any incorrect objects. So at some point we will use decoy objects such as rubber ducks or screwdrivers or anything. Um, your robot is allowed to take that object and examine it more closely. But once it drives off the, well, with the object and leaves the manipulation area, 
it will be counted as an incorrect grasping and you will be penalized for it. Um, an object only counts as placed if it is completely inside the destination service area and does not touch any other objects and it doesn't move at the end of the run. Um, this is because we have some objects that are prone to rolling and then falling somewhere where they don't belong. Um, so to penalize this, of course, the objects are not allowed to move at the end of a run. Um, and also some objects might already lie on the table. You're not allowed to move any other objects by placing your object. Uh, this is why your object that you've placed should not touch any other objects. And for both object grasping and placing, uh, the object should not be dropped from above five centimeters. So in your placement routine, you shouldn't drop it from above this threshold. Otherwise, it will not count as placing an object. Now, going on for the basic transportation test. This is where it gets a bit more tricky. You will receive a list of objects for each service area, which have to be picked, and another list for each service area of the objects that have to be placed there. So for example, list one will be our service area ABC, where you have to get certain objects. And then list B will be service area BCD, where you have to place the objects again. Three decoy objects will be placed in the arena, which of course you will have, have to detect that they are not the objects you want. Um, your robot starts outside of the area. It will need to enter the arena through the entrance. Um, and then of course, you are not allowed to interact with the robot again, and it is not allowed to place any objects wrongly, otherwise it will be penalized. Again, as for previous, previous tests, uh, you need to reach a final place to finish the run, otherwise you will not get the maximum points. And for the BTT, you will have three different difficulties. Um, first, you will only have five objects and only 10 centimeter tables and barrier, placed, barrier tape will be placed in a blocking and a non-blocking way. Then for basic transportation two, you will have six objects. All table heights will be used, so 0, 5, 10, and 15 centimeters. And you will also have physical objects that are blocking or semi-blocking the arena. Then uh, basic transportation test three will be sort of the hardest one. Uh, you will again have six objects that need to be transported. You only have 10 centimeter tables, but now you also have shelves where you need to grasp uh, objects and also place objects. You will have two arbitrary surfaces and you will also need to place your objects inside the containers, uh, the red and blue ones that I've already shown. Then for the precise placement test, uh, here's the cavities that you've already seen before. Each, tavi each cavity is the object dimension plus two, two millimeters. So it is really a very, very tight fit. You need to act very precisely. Um, and in this, say, in this test, you will have at most five cavities. The placement is only correct when the object is placed in the correct cavity and actually manages to fall through uh, and touch the floor. Of course, your, roboter, your, your robot, if it is able to do so, is allowed to try to free stuck objects, but only if it doesn't move the, ob uh, the cavities um, or damage anything. The duration here is five, four minutes because you aren't really required to move much. You will have a table where the objects lie very close to the precise placement table. And it really is all about this precision. And that's why the competition is rather short. Now, um, nearly the last one and the probably most complex one is the rotating turntable test. Like I already said, you will have this rotating circular table where you will need to grasp the objects um, and you will only need to place them on the robot. There will be decoy objects, so you will need to detect the correct object and only grasp that. And of course, you're not allowed to stop the table by holding onto it or by digging onto it or touching it too hard. And you're also not allowed to affect any objects that you don't currently want to grasp. So you can see here the objects have uh, a certain distance to each other. And if your grasping is too slow and your grasping process moves to the next coming object, you will again be penalized um, and it will not count as a correct grasp. Now, last but not least, the finale will contain all of the things that I've already told you about. You will have to transport a total of 10 objects, 
all table heights will be used, physical obstacles such as peri tape and um, you know, physical objects, of course, and virtual object obstacles such as peri tape will be used. You will have three arbitrary surfaces, two times grasping from a shelf, one time, place, one time placement on a shelf, uh, grasping from the rotating turntable, as well as container placement and cavity placement. For this huge task, you will have 50 minutes time. Um, and yeah, this sort of is the height of all of this. It contains everything that has already been done. And it is sort of just to show everything you can do with your robot. Now I have a little overview again, where you can just see where deco objects are used, which table heights are used for each competition, for each test, um, whether the barrier tape is placed or not, whether you have to grasp uh, or interact with a shelf or not, whether you have, have to place into containers or not, just to have a final overview of everything. And last but not least, I want to talk a bit about the penalties that are applied. So, for example, if you drop an object to the floor, you will get minus, 10 point, uh, minus 100 points. If you place the wrong object on a surface, uh, you will get minus 50 points. The same thing for a minor collision. Um, for a major collision, you will get minus 50 points and your run will be terminated. You are allowed to restart your run, but like I already said, you're only allowed to restart it once. Um, and for the barrier tape collision, you will receive minus 5% points of the current run, and this can stack to up to, uh, to up to 20%. So the more you, you cross the barrier tape, the, le the less points you will receive in total. Now, minor collisions are only collisions where you collide with an interaction element, so either a uh, PPT table, a RTT table, this rotating turntable uh, with cavities or the upper shelf level. Major collisions are when you collide with a static element, so walls or tables, or the red white barrier tape that is sort of a virtual wall, or if you fundamentally change the environment. So if you, let's say, grasp the arbitrary surface of a table, that is a major change in the environment, and again, it will be heavily penalized by this major collision. Um, for most of these things, you can read through it in the rulebook. Um, I've mainly referred to the rulebook of 2021 because the 2022 rulebook is not finished as of now. Um, but I think it will it will be published once it is finished, and then you can read all the rules there as well. Um, yeah, so that's sort of a very very big overview um, of the the whole competition. I think it was a bit fast. It always happens when I start presenting. Um, but yeah. Thank you very much. So, okay, I um, saw the audience from here. Uh, do you have anything to ask uh, or something to share the idea of the global cup industrial as well? So, I saw many committee coming to join this event as well. Uh, so, okay, uh, at the committee, do you have anything to to um, to share ideas or something. Let me see if I can open my mic. How do I open it? Because he has to lock it. Uh, let me lock my mic first. Then I will open it. Okay. 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 But Asas, you, I, I saw Asas as well. The executive committee. Do you have anything to share or comment? Okay, thank you very much. Um, other committees that join here, you have. Uh, oh, you cannot unmute yourself. Okay, can uh, the host can unmute? Uh, Asad, uh, I'm not sure that I spell your real names, but A S A D. Can you open the mic of A S A D? Can you? Okay. Okay, please now the unmute already. Please. Yeah, but but we will definitely keep you guys posted uh, once we have uh, the rulebook released. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So the other committees, you would like to share or uh, talk some things about this, the league. So because today we have uh, many, uh, many uh, team join here to, I think it is good opportunity to distribute or tell you something here. I saw macro. Okay, uh, so Sally, Sally, are you still here, Sally? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Okay, I, I have one question in, uh, in based on your experience. I uh, what is the the ch challenge point in the technical that we have to uh, uh, focus or prepare very much in the competitions? Can you uh, tell me more about that? Um. Well, the technical focus point is multiple things. So, first of all, you will need to. Um, have a navigation that is able to pick up new objects, uh, new obstacles that are dynamically placed there. Um, you will have to have a very good object detection to differ between decoy objects and real objects. And of course, correctly detect the objects that you have. Um, you will also need the object detection for the precise placement. So we'll, you will need to detect the cavities yourself, match the co uh, correct cavity to your object. And then of course have a robot arm and just a whole robot that is able to correctly place it there. So it has to be precise enough to actually do that. And then of course, um, for the rotating turntable, you will have to have a very good vision to just um, detect this moving object and also grasp it fast enough and uh, precisely enough to actually get it and not move anything that you don't want to move. You, you mean that the object recognition is really quite a focus point in this competition, right? Yeah, I think the there's not really a main focus point. I think the robot has many aspects and they are sort okay. of equally important. So, uh, okay, I think that we have uh, many students and many uh, teams coming here. Uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, you can raise your hand and so I, we will unmute you to, to talk. Okay, any questions from the audience? Okay, Kun Salusha. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm not familiar with the WebEx now. Uh, can you unmute Kun Salusha for uh, some question from them? Salusha Yan Yong, I think. Okay, Salusha, you have unmute now. Okay. Okay, so actually, Michael already answered my question. I just want to ask about uh, if we if we need to build some the testing area for my team to test that one. How can we find that information? Um, it's in the rule book. I think Marco has posted a link to it. Um, yes, it's right. yes, uh, and there's all of the information, so all measurements and sort of more technical drawings for the shelves, for example, um, everything is in there. Okay. And I found some the robot from the last year. We can use that one, right? Mm. 
You, you mean, can you spell it again? Sorry. Okay, so I found the rule books from the last year, maybe 2021. Mm -hmm. Can we use that information? Oh, rule books, right? Yes. Um, um, there are some changes in there, but I think the the measurements for the shelf or the general arena setup didn't change. So for the arena, I think you can use the 2021 um, rule book. But for example, uh, there's, a, there's a few things that have changed, but not for the arena setup. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So uh, I think that we have to wait for the rule book of 2072 as well. So I think now it's near close to have the next rule book already. That's the committee has said. So can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to clarify yeah, um, yeah, on the question. So for now, um, all the teams should just follow rule book 20. Actually, you can find most of the information that you need for the competition and for the preparation. We will have a couple of uh, changes as Sally mentioned, and those mm -hmm. will be released very soon. And once it is released, we will announce it um, through our mailing list as well. So I, I would like to encourage if there are new teams here, they mm -hmm. must subscribe to our mailing list so they can they can be updated on what's going on in our league. They can also refer to uh, to our web page for more information. And um, if there are new teams here that have not pre-registered, please mm -hmm. um, please do so as soon as possible. Um, we we actually uh, sent a call for pre-registration a while ago, and wow. um, I think the deadline is already passed. But but we still can accept new teams. We will be doing the qualification round very soon because the Thai committee wants uh, to know how many teams will be participating. So we have to really um, do this quickly. So if there are new teams on this call, um, please go to our website and do the pre-registration as soon as possible. And if you cannot find the information, um, you can you can contact me. I, I will I will write my email address in the chat. So you can contact me if uh, if you need more information um, to get us started with our league. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Asas. So, okay, you mean uh, the new team should uh, go to the website and register, right? Uh, yes, they must pre-register if they want okay, to be qualified for the competition. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So we do have a we do we will be we, we are asking teams to. Uh, to send us qualification materials so we can assess them and then we can qualify them. So this uh, this process is mandatory and all teams should go through this process. Uh, the process and document that need to prepare is uh, stated on the website, right? Yes, everything is there. Yes, all the details uh, are there. They they should if if they go to our website, um, there is a new section um, and there they can see the call for participation for Robocop 2022. And under that section, they can find all the information. As I said, if they cannot find that information, they can contact me uh, by the okay, email sorry. that I just posted in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so sure. thank you. Uh, just something the yeah. isn't the uh, registr registration deadline already passed? I'm not sure, but I think it is. It's already yes, it has. Yeah, but but it's okay. We still can accept new teams. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. That, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, sorry, something... can I ask for how many teams announced that uh, in the league? Oh. Sorry. Okay, okay, please, Sally, so sorry. Um, no, it's just something that I forgot to mention. Um, as of 2022, you will have to, uh, you're not allowed to just get your robot in once you're um, allowed to enter the arena or once your prep time starts. Uh, but before each test, uh, 15, min 15 minutes before each test, everyone will has to place the robot um, in a certain area um, and you will just have to wait there um, sort of for your turn and you're not allowed to work on your robot anymore except for fixing very serious damage. Um, it's just sort of like the rule in, in car racing where you're not allowed to work on it for the last minute, but you will just have to wait your turn before, before the test in the competition. Um, to be honest, I don't think I have anything more to add to it. Um, I think in the end, 
everything will be in the new rulebook and it will be a lot more understandable than the 2021 rulebook. Um, and it will have, of course, all the updates that are important for, for the competition. Okay, thank you very much. So, okay, I think that today we have a very excellent presentation from Salif about the introductions, rule, and also some, some point in the uh, uh, competitions of the at work. So I also uh, many competitors join here and give us the very good detail and also uh, really uh, excellent information for us if uh, we can to prepare or making to submit some of the team details to them before uh, we go ahead to uh, the next steps, right? So, okay, uh, the last great, uh, the last last minute of now, do you, I don't know, do you have any more questions or uh, if not, I think that today is really quite <clears throat> good uh, time to us to meet together and also know the detail of S words really much. Okay, thank you for uh, the speaker, uh, Sally, and also uh, uh, the executive organization, uh, organizing committees, also uh, us and many, many of committees here, and also the audience. Okay, uh, if uh, we don't have any more questions, I think it is a time now for uh, to close the sessions. And also, thank you very much. And I think that we can see you at the uh, Global Cup uh, 2022, okay, at the Edward as well. Thank you very much. I would like to close this session. Thank you. Sally, thank you very much. Thank you.